graduate of Lawrenceville School and Princeton University, Malcolm Forrest became as famous for his lifestyle as he was for his business acumen. Under his leadership, Forbes magazine grew dramatically to become one of America's most successful business magazines. All was enjoying life to the fullest, Forbes was a role model for philanthropy in his later years. Malcolm Forbes was a huge business leader, quite possibly the most dominant force supporting and reporting on capitalism in the 20th century. As America's favorite capitalist, what type of advice would you give the little guy? If you're not out, it's too late. And if you got out at a loss, you're one of the few that took it other than the very big fellows. Uh, there had to be a buyer for those 600 million shares yesterday and on Tuesday. Uh, if you're not out, it's too late. And stay in. You can't be wrong. And if you have money, seriously, I think you could do well to start to invest some of it. His magazine, Forbes, became the benchmark of measuring wealth of the world and American leaders during his reign as his public sharing continues today with features such as Forbes 400. Malcolm's father, B.C. Forbes, came over from Scotland to New York as an immigrant in 1904 after studying at the University of Dundee. After many attempts at journalism, finally in 1917 he created Forbes magazine. And in 1919 he had a son named Malcolm. Malcolm studied at Princeton University, majoring in political science, and the Lawrenceville School, where now he has sections named after him in both. He wanted to stay longer to build his knowledge and experience at Princeton, but his efforts had to be scrapped at the start of America fighting in World War II. During World War II, Forbes enlisted for the U.S. Army, ranking up and up until becoming a heavy machine gunner. He got wounded while fighting in Germany in 1944 and spent the final months of the war in a hospital. When the war was over, he came back to a whole new life. Economy in America started to rise. Not that that was too much concern to the Forbes household. In 1954, B.C. Forbes died and he left the company to Malcolm, who became the publisher and editor-in-chief. Since then, Forbes magazine has grown from an average of 100,000 readers to an average reader count of 750,000, making Forbes magazine one of the most renowned magazines in America today. Malcolm isn't just known for his magazine, though. He's flown across the USA in a hot air balloon, breaking six ballooning records on just that trip. Later, he won an award for his efforts with ballooning called the Harmon Trophy. He was also very interested in motorcycling. He often spent time motorcycling with an actress named Elizabeth Taylor. This is a, a ride for aid to muscular dystrophy, and Harley Davidson is a principal backer of that. And this is the Eastern Rally we're going to have, right? Yes. In Pennsylvania. He's also invested in National Heritage Magazine and Egg a journal for art lovers. Malcolm seemed to have the Midas touch with making investments and profiting over $600 million. He also owned or collected many cool items or properties. He had a chateau in France, a mansion in London, an island in the South Seas, and a palace in Tangier, Morocco. He also owned collections of motorcycles, fabric imperial Easter eggs, and oriental paintings. In addition, he was very interested in politics. In 1951 through 1958, he ran as the Seddon of New Jersey. In 1957, he tried to up his status by running for New Jersey governor. Malcolm Forbes had many relationships with the big men in the White House. He and Vice President Hubert Humphrey, who was the guest honor, held the magazine's 50th anniversary in huge tents. He was friends and supported Dwight D. Eisenhower, who became the president of the USA and came to visit Malcolm many times. After his death at his funeral, President George Bush stated him as a giant of American business. In 1954, Forbes decided to launch a new system of rating corporations and comparing the wealth of people, some of the most used ways today. 
During the late 50s and early 60s, this made Forbes industry shoot up in sales, becoming a key point in their success. After his brother Bruce died from cancer, Malcolm took full control of the company. He began using the magazine as a capitalist tool and started the annual edition of Forbes 400, which quickly became popular. It was a list of all the biggest, richest faces in American society and how they became rich. Today, the leader is Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. After an extravagant, unexpected rise in popularity, gaining over six times the amount of viewers, Forbes had passed longtime rivals, Business Weekly, and Fortune. In 1945, on September 21st, Malcolm Forbes was married to a woman named Roberta Remsen. On July 18th, 1947, they had a kid named Steve, who was the editor-in-chief of Forbes Today. However, after their fourth kid together, the couple divorced in 1985. Forbes was always on the move, throwing huge parties in amazing places. He always had many friends and knew how to make new ones wherever he went. Malcolm said he wanted to be a fun millionaire. Malcolm didn't want to have any obligations. He just did what he wanted to and didn't worry about a thing. On 1989, Malcolm had his last and possibly most extravagant birthday parties ever, celebrating the 70th year of his life. Many of his buddies and people he had met over the years came together to celebrate with him in Tangier, Morocco. He even flew some of his closest friends in on a chartered Concorde jet, spending over $2.5 million on what was his 70th and last birthday. But then just a few months later, Malcolm Forbes was found dead in his sleep from a heart attack on his bed. The company was given to Steve Forbes, and many came to mourn his death at the funeral of who was truly one of the great business leaders of the 20th century.